Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com with the latest from climate expert Joe Biden. A couple of weeks after demonstrating his expertise at military withdrawals in Afghanistan, Joe Biden has weighed in about wildfires. He says that wildfires are supercharged by climate change and these fires are blinking code red for our nation. He says wildfires are not a Democrat thing, they're not a Republican thing, they're a weather thing. Biden says that the fires in Idaho were caused by global warming. Apparently, Joe Biden was unaware that the largest wildfire in U.S. history occurred in Idaho and Montana in the year 1910. For two terrifying days and nights, August 20th and 21st, 1910, the fire raged across 3 million acres of virgin timberland in northern Idaho and western Montana. Most of what was destroyed fell to hurricane force winds that turned the fire into a blowtorch. A forester rode a flame shooting hundreds of feet in the air. In a matter of hours, fires became firestorms, and trees by the millions became exploding candles. Millions more trees sucked from the ground, roots and all, became flying blowtorches. Fireballs leaped canyons a half mile wide in one fluid motion. Entire mountainsides ignited in an instant. Most of the three million acres that burned went up in smoke in a matter of just a few hours. The devastation from this fire is unlike anything which has been seen in the United States during Joe Biden's lifetime. March of 1910 was the warmest March on record in the United States, about 10 degrees above average temperature. Two-thirds of afternoon temperature measurements in the United States during March 1910 were over 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The snow melted very early in 1910 and was followed by a brutally hot and dry summer which led to the explosive conditions by August 1910. Carbon dioxide levels were very low in 1910, but Joe Biden thinks that by lowering CO2 levels we could prevent wildfires in the future. This wasn't the largest wildfire in North America, which actually occurred in 1825 in New Brunswick. The Miramichi fire in New Brunswick burned 4 million acres in about 24 hours. The deadliest fires in U.S. history occurred around the Great Lakes 150 years ago, with Wisconsin being hit the hardest. On October 8, 1871, Chicago burned to the ground, but there was a much worse fire burning further north around Green Bay, Wisconsin. On October 8, 1871, about a thousand people died in Peshtigo, Wisconsin in the fire. In just a few hours, more acres burned in Wisconsin in 1871 than have in California during this entire year. As the day grew darker, a strange red glow appeared in the west. The wind began to pick up at dusk, carried dust, ashes, and sparks. Father Pernan wrote, on looking towards the west, whence the wind had persistently blown for hours past, I perceived above the dense cloud of smoke overhanging the earth a vivid red reflection of immense extent. Around 10 o'clock, the low rumbling sound that people began noticing grew into a roar. The sound was described as like a freight train or a huge rushing waterfall. Suddenly, big sheets of flame blew out of the forest. Everything in the fire's path was instantly consumed. High winds blew people to the ground, and the hot air burned people's lungs. A similar fire burned in Victoria, Australia on February 6, 170 years ago. February 6, 1851 was known as Black Thursday. At 8 o'clock in the morning, it was 117 degrees in the shade at Melbourne. Then hurricane force winds came up and burned up most of the state of Victoria in less than 24 hours. The reality is that burn acreage in the United States this year is below the 10-year average and down about 90% from 90 years ago. And if we go back further to the pre-industrial period from 1500 to 1800, an average of 145 million acres burned annually. Burn acreage this year is down about 95% from what it was in the pre-industrial era. This document was very inconvenient for the Biden administration, so they removed it from the National Interagency Fire Center website sometime in the last six months. Meanwhile, the always reliable San Francisco Chronicle is reporting this. Wildfires are burning dangerously close to the famed giant forest. It's the home of the General Sherman Tree, considered the largest living thing on Earth. They say fires burning in Sequoia National Park threaten the world's largest trees. 
But if we go to the National Park Service website, they say, the importance of fire to giant sequoias cannot be overstated. Other than the change of seasons, fire is the most recurrent and critical process in determining the life history of this species. Tree ring records from giant sequoias show that frequent surface fires were the typical pattern of fire occurrence over the past 2,000 years. But this pattern changed after about 1860 when fire frequency declined sharply. The decline in regional fire was probably a result of intensive sheep grazing that began about this time and a decrease in fires set by Native Americans, followed by fire suppression by government agencies. The trees aren't threatened by fire. What they've been threatened by is the lack of fire since 1860. As is normally the case, Biden and the newspapers have no clue what they're talking about. In 1936, forest fires in the Santa Cruz Mountains of California were seen as the greatest peril to future prosperity. And if Los Angeles Times and San Francisco Chronicle writers actually read their own newspaper, they would know that California has had just as large fires in the past, like this million acre fire in 1899. Another incredible fire occurred around Valentine's Day in 1898 in South Carolina when about 3 million acres burned in just over 24 hours. Also in 1898 was the largest fire in Colorado history and massive forest fires in Wisconsin as well. We've been very fortunate that during our lifetime we haven't had wildfires like 1910, 1871, 1851, and 1825. Joe Biden's belief that he can prevent wildfires with windmills and electric cars is spectacularly delusional. But so is just about everything else the press is reporting on these days. Toto's been pulling back the curtain on this madness for the past 13 years. And you can visit him, Kyrie, and Caesar on the web at realclimatescience.com.